Hi everyone and welcome to this extra video on building filters. In the first video I wanted to really stress why it is that we actually care about filters in the first place, but I know it can be difficult to get used to breadboarding, so I wanted to put together another video just giving you some extra help for how to set your filters up on your breadboard and how to take the measurements you'll need to do in this lab. Here's a low pass filter actually built on our breadboard and the first thing I want to show you is that this is pretty simple again, right? Like here's one resistor and one capacitor, which is exactly what we see over here in the diagram. Working out these other connections, this first one here is from our function generator and you can see all I had to do was connect the signal line, which is this red line here, through to the input on this side of the resistor and then the ground is this taped off connection here which just gets connected to the ground bus on our breadboard. And I just did that by clipping it onto this capacitor here which is also plugged into the ground bus. Then you can see over here the output is going to go to our oscilloscope so I connect the signal lead up to the capacitor which you can see right here and this whole connection again all of this here is electrically connected together through the breadboard. So I hooked one side onto the capacitor and the other side got connected through to ground here. Also it mentions in the lab manual that you want to connect your ground bus through to the ground post here. But it's important to note that our breadboard isn't on and I haven't made any connections to the power supplies because we don't need those for these filters. Here's my final setup. What I did is I took the signal from the function generator and split it through a T here so that one part of the signal comes around to my filter and I taped off my inputs from the function generator to identify those. Then the other part goes through a cable with two B and C connections on each end over to channel one on the oscilloscope. I also connected channel two on the oscilloscope back through to the output of my filter, which you can see is these untaped off leads here. So now if you take a look over at the oscilloscope, that's what first showed up when I turned everything on, which isn't very helpful. So I'm going to push my favorite button, the auto set there. And in a second, we see two waves appear. The first one is channel one, that's yellow up top there, and that's the input to the filter. And the bottom is channel two, or the output of the filter. This filter has a cutoff frequency of around 150 Hz, and what you'll see is as I turn the frequency up on my function generator, for a while the two signals have about the same amplitude, but once I get past my 150 Hz cutoff frequency, what you can see is that the bottom signal or the output from the filter starts getting much smaller in magnitude, which is what we expect.